Hello, everybody. C2E2, how are you? Yeah, everyone's doing well. Great, it's Friday. Uh, so I am Jackie Jennings. I am a host for Sci-Fi Wire, which is your destination for all things geeky, like news, podcasts, videos, anything you could possibly want, we have it. And today I am here with Terry Moore. Hello, Terry. Hi. Hey. How are you? Uh, I'm well, how are you? Yeah. Thanks, guys. So I'm very excited because not only are we going to be chatting, but also you're going to be doing some uh, live art on our stage. Yeah, there's a nice wall for me to deface right yeah. here. Is this, I, I would imagine, um, this isn't nerve-wracking anymore, the way a blank page, a blank... Well... You know I, what you're going to fill it with. Um, I kind of cheated a little bit and just put a little hint of what I wanted to oh, go for. Um, That's because all right. I, it's really, really possible for me to make a terrible drawing. It is possible? Yeah, it is. I don't believe it. Yeah, it is. Um, so I have to, uh, you know, like, try my hardest. Okay, so what will you be drawing for us today? Uh, Kachu. Okay, great. I don't know if anybody's ever heard of a girl named Kachu, but... Yeah? Okay. Awesome. So I'm going to so give this a shot. And you guys are going to get my best side on the back. <laughs> Okay, I'm, but I'm listening. Okay. Do you have any questions? I will. So what, what are you using to draw? So you use just pencil first. I have a pencil here, which is actually, I prefer pencils. Uh, they're very organic, and you get a real natural drawing. As opposed to like when you go to ink, everything just gets real slick and polished. Okay. But I tried my best. Cool. So we'll forgive, we'll forgive what you've called cheating that it was already there when it came out. Yeah, I did, because... I, I have a very hard time, I'll say, believing that I, th I think probably whatever you believe to be what you would call a not good drawing is the best thing that most of us have ever put on paper. <laughs> Thank you. I would, I would do, um, I would happily lose an art off. I'm mastering a smiley face. So, you know, but when you're drawing like a really large portrait, just get off just a little bit, and suddenly the face is just hideous. So, so do it's you really have, important. Is there any one character that you've drawn, yours or in any other franchise, that is, is consistently really difficult or notoriously really difficult for artists? Uh, yeah. Um, actually, there were... This character, Kachu, yeah. um, was really hard for me to draw in the beginning. Um, and I thought about writing her out of the story. But Just she's gone she's because she's too difficult. Too hard to draw. Yeah. yeah, like I, I was on the second or third issue of that series, Strangers in Paradise. Mm -hmm. And I thought, well, this is too hard to draw her, so I'm just going to write her out. <laughs> Were you going to write uh, an epic death or just sort of say, you know what? She got sick between issues and she's, she's out. She has kind of an attitude. So, so, It'd be more like she walked. Okay. She, so just, she quit on her yeah. own terms. You people are never going to figure out your problems. I'm out of here. Oh, I respect yeah. that. Like okay. when you've had too much of a soap opera? Yeah. <laughs> She's gone. So talk to us a little bit about Strangers in Paradise. It's you. It's entirely created by you. The art, the writing, it's all yours. Yeah, it is. Um, I kind of wanted to make, make a romance story. This is back in the early 90s mm -hmm. um, when, I don't know, it was different. It was, so I, I didn't see the story I wanted um, about love triangles, but it was flipped. Okay. And uh, so I, I decided to try the story on my own just for my own entertainment, to write a story about two women and a guy and then all their life and just live with them. Got it. You know, so there's not one plot. There's there's like ten years worth of story, and it's just you know one after the other. So. So by a flipped love triangle, I for a second thought you meant nobody loves each other, but it's two men pursuing. Got it. No, it's. I'm one sorry. Guy, two women pursuing one two man. Guys. Yes, yes, yes. She That's flipped. loves her. She likes him, but she falls in love with her, and then he loves her, and then it's just a mess. Very complicated. So it takes them a few years to work it out. Okay. So why, what inspired you to want to create, publish, be in control of your own work, top to bottom? Mm. Well, uh, 
I hate to keep bringing it up, but because uh, I do it in every interview. Please. But it's true story. Um, I was in a I was in uh, bands back when I was young. Everybody my age was in a band. What'd you play? Guitar. Nice. And but it was in a cover band, so you're playing everybody else's material. And where do cover bands go? Nowhere. Um, the Jersey Shore. There's a very healthy. It's my place and my people. But yes. You I can. Know what oh, you you're mean. never out of work. Yeah. You can always play. <laughs> but you know. Yeah. Uh, anyways, you're not, you're not going to end up as, you know, where you want to go. So when I finally got a chance again at another career in comics, I decided I wasn't going to be in a cover band and do other people's material. Uh, if I, like for instance, if I draw Batman, I would be the one millionth person to draw Batman. The Batman fans aren't there because I, of me. I'm on probation. I'm just there to be sure I don't mess it up, you know. Mm. And I compared it to be like being the fifth husband. You know, there may be some love there, but the kids will never trust you. <laughs> so uh, that's kind of how I felt about work for hire. Uh, and I just wanted to have my own world because one of the things that I loved about Peanuts and Charles Schultz was he was a world builder. Like, I would rather be in his neighborhood than mine. And it was the world he was building, all those kids and where they hung out and the street and the yard and the tree and the pond and all that. So I wanted to build my own world where I could just kind of live there and. Um, when I look back on it now, the one thing that they all, all the stories had in common was hope. Mm. And the further we get in the years, the less there is of that in the news and online. So I'm glad that that was kind of my overall theme. And, and I still make comics because in my stories, there's always hope, you know, whether it's for love or get another chance or whatever, you know. Yeah. Without being sappy, everybody has to work for it. But yeah. I like it. I want to um, talk about, so uh, thematically, your work connects, but you're also writing within a universe. Yeah. So not just in terms of you're writing it so there's a theme of hope, but you've also connected your works. Yeah. Can you talk a little bit? Is that something that you always knew from day one was going to happen or is it something that once you had this body of work you could look at and say you know what i think these are all happening in the same universe which you know which came first there was an epiphany moment uh when i started it um i did the first little i started with a little three-part miniseries mm -hmm. and it was just this this story the triangle and when it when i realized i was going to start a regular series with it after the miniseries, I thought, well, I'll just make it all the stories of people that live on this one block, this cul-de-sac. So we'll just go to the neighbors, the creepy neighbors, mm -hmm. and see their story. But I was getting so much, by that time I started getting feedback from people finally saw the book, and it was all about Kachu and Francine, and I realized I, that's my, this is my ride. <laughs> this is my bus ride right here, stick with this. So, um, but I always had in my mind that everybody had a lot of backstory, and that if somebody disappeared, then they went off and had their story, but it could always come back. And when I, later on in the series, Kachu, here, she has an art gallery, and she has a girl working for her named Jet. And um, after that art gallery uh, time in the story, Jet goes back home, and where she goes is actually in Rachel Rising. She goes back to Manson and it's the same Jet. So that's when I realized, you know, Jet's story is just as interesting as everybody else's. And next thing I knew, I had four different titles and all the characters, there's, a, there's an SIP character in each one and it all kind of connects. And I call it the Terryverse because people used to, Robert Heinlein got about halfway through his career and decided he wanted all of his books to be, connect. And so he's called it the Heinlein verse and he used this one main character, Lazarus Long, to you know, weave in and out of all these other stories, and he retrofitted some of it. I thought it was just brilliant, and so 100 years later, I did, <laughs> I did the Heinlein verse thing. Yeah. So what, obviously this is not how you would typically work. Right. <laughs> on stage in front of people in a live stream, I'm guessing. Yeah, no, none of these people are in my studio. Yeah, we're not all, this isn't yeah. an entourage, yeah. 
So what would, just as you're working, what would your typical um, working environment and day look like? Um, let's see, I would probably, I, I get up and eat breakfast and then I go to the studio and do email and social media for about an hour. Sure. And, um, I credit an hour for I, email I, and social media. That's, I limit it. I just have to cut it off. Do you use, this is so, do you use any kind of app? Like, do you very carefully regulate yourself with email, social media, it's an hour, I'm done, and then I'm working and focused on just that. I kind of, um, I kind of just go through my different, I'm in three places, I'm on Instagram, mm -hmm. Twitter, and Facebook, and I just kind of do everything I can until the Russians find me and then I have to log off. <laughs> <laughs> until someone far away pulls the plug, That's yeah. Kind of it. And I like to leave little presents for the Russians on my desktop, little folders, like, Russia, please don't look in this one, you know. <laughs> So you need to be good to your hacker. Yeah. They'll, they'll be good to you. I do the same thing. I'll leave little notes in my G chats and say, if the NSA is watching, yeah. I, <laughs> I don't mean anything. <laughs> yeah. I, you know, I, just, I say I've these uh, stupid things, and I just run off at the mouth. And then I did, I did that. I made a crack like that um, on Twitter. And SIP is published in Russia now. So I have people from Moscow tweeting me in the middle of the night going, Terry, we're not that bad. <laughs> you know. Don't blame it on us. <laughs> we're pretty sure it was the Ukrainians. <laughs> Everyone's blaming someone else. Uh, actually, so sorry, I, didn't I, I want to tell you this. I don't know about the guys on the news, but every time I've met a, a Russian in person, they've been the sweetest person I've ever met. Russians, they were, every one of them has been real nice. So it's, I, I, I guess they have a leader that's different. So I don't, that. I can't imagine what that feels like. I don't know. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know. Okay. So I didn't let you get past oh, um, 8 a.m. So, <laughs> okay, so once the hackers find me, I, I log mm -hmm. off mm -hmm. and then I go to the drawing board and um, I have an outline of what, I, what the next page looks like in my head or mm -hmm. in the notes. Um, and I just start drawing and I try to pencil it um, the first half of the day and then I ink it the last half of the day. And then that's an ideal day, but usually there's a lot of other stuff going on, like a diamond previews wants a solicitation and I have to make that up out of the blue air. Mm -hmm. So, or all the other stuff that's going on. So if I was just drawing the book, it would be so nice, but there's a lot. Because I self-publish, there's a lot of other things going on. Yeah, I would imagine that it's um, in addition to the, and I think a lot of artists, whether they be uh, fine artists or writers or actors, the business of your business of doing what you're doing can be really time consuming and it can feel like, well, all I had time for in the day was to sort of manage myself and my um, company in your case. Is that do you ever feel that conflict between the, you know, I'm, you're creating everything, which is this wonderful creative freedom, but also you have to worry about the business side of things? Or is that also yeah, fun it, in its own way? The trick about self-publishing is that the, the longer you go, the more successful it is, the harder it is. Yeah. And um, I got about two years in before I needed help, and so my wife came in, mm -hmm. and um, so just like Jeff Smith and Vijaya, there was, I had my wife come and run the business. So now Robin, everybody knows Robin, um, she runs the business, and it's a full-time job. I mean, she's yeah. just always it's, she's a publisher, basically. Yeah. And you would think it wouldn't be that hard. You think, well, Terry, you're just making one comic. But um, everything I've ever made is still in print, and it's in 19 languages. And um, there's all these contracts and licenses. And, and it's incredibly, uh, yeah. Yeah. The operations is in and of itself, for sure. And we have a warehouse full of books, and we do the orders and the shipping and orders and run the website. So she wears a lot of hats. Yeah. Well. Meanwhile, I'm just sitting in the corner in my underwear drawing comics. <laughs> so she's the adult in the room. Yeah. Sitting, so, so today is very different for you. 
Yeah, today I'm allowed in public. I'm off the leash, so. Great. Hmm. So tell us a little bit about, I, I know that for some artists, hair is very difficult and there is a lot of it going on here. Is that, is there anything that is especially challenging for you about, well, you, you mentioned this character being one that is very difficult in general, right? So what is it, can you break down specifically about her that is difficult? Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll tell you honestly what it was. It was, um, I, have, I always seem to draw the same faces, but I wanted Kachu to have a California nose you know, like the little surfer girl nose that's kind of... Yeah. You know, all the surfer girls are, are the granddaughters of fourth generation actresses. Hollywood's, all the pretty people in America went to Hollywood for about 60 years. Yeah. And then they all had kids and then they all learned to surf. So they all have these great profiles. And that's why they're, you know, they have that. And anyway, so I wanted her to have that instead of like more of a Midwestern nose or a Eastern nose or whatever. So, and I don't know how to do that. I mean, to jot out, get that perfect every time was, every time I would get it wrong, suddenly she, her face would be too long mm. or it'd be too squat, you know. Anyway, she wasn't turning out consistent. It's not my natural thing. Yeah. Um, so that's very detailed explanation of, I've no. never actually told anybody that. She um, almost got fired because of her nose. Yeah, it was, her nose was too hard to draw. <laughs> um, whereas the, her, the other characters, like Francine, it was more like a straight nose. Mm -hmm. I could get more consistent with it. Sure. I was so, drawing way over my level. Really? Yeah, because what I came from before I could did comics was comic strips. Okay. So everything was a circle, you know? It was a lot easier. And what was the process like for you switching, learning? How, how did you adapt to a completely different style? It took me... Um, when I first started the comic books, I was thinking at first maybe I'll do manga style because I had spent two years reading manga. Mm -hmm. um, and the comic strip stuff looked too goofy for comics. Um, and that's before there was all this, a lot of people in Artist Alley have cartooning now. Yeah. And I, I wasn't, it wasn't that way. Back in the 90s, everybody wanted to be Jim Lee and anything less looked amateurish. So I was thinking, how do I draw better? So I started off, and my book is kind of a hybrid. It's cartoony, but I was trying harder. And I think the first year or two are very, it looks very different than what I do now. It took me a few years to settle in. What, what do you think is responsible for that shift? Why do you think there's been uh, sort of an upswing, or, or is it just that there is more, so more styles of art are or is think, it trends? I think, I, I think that that group, that's always existed. Yeah. But social media lets them connect and see, we love this. Like your little cartoons you draw at work, you know, lampooning something, mm -hmm. you post it and now you can post it and get 2,000 likes in one day and know, oh, okay, well maybe I, my art doesn't suck, you know? Mm -hmm. And like for instance, my favorite uh, comic strip of all time now is Cyanide and Happiness. Anybody read, heard of that? It's just stick figures, and it's the funniest thing in the world. Um, there, are how many people used to sit at home with stick figures and think I can't draw? Yeah. And now they have a fan base, and so they're encouraged. Okay, come get a table and meet your fans. So it seems like maybe a little bit what you're speaking to is that when you're operating in a system that maybe doesn't have feedback other than s sales once you have something like social media that can open up the world and say to whoever's making choices or to individual creators actually there is a market for what you're doing it's just we didn't have the door open before but now it's undeniable there was a door but it was mm. dc yeah marvel it's narrow so if you can't draw like Jim Lee or Neil Adams, uh, stay home until you can, you know? Yeah. And social media has made it so that there's more than just mainstream doors. You can do anything you want and find your audience yourself. You don't need those guys, you know? Like, if you want to write a book, the last people you need is Harper Collins. You don't need anybody <laughs> to publish your stuff, you know? Just write it, put it out there. 
Yeah, I think that's really, yeah, I think that's super inspiring, especially to a lot of, um, and I think it translates to styles and it translates to types of characters that we see, uh, you know, there's no market for a female-led superhero movie. Well, you're wrong. You're statistically incorrect. So is that, do you see social media, as you mentioned it before, as something that you, you know, follow and manage? Do you take feedback from readers, or is it something that you can use as almost a test market to say, you know, here's an image. Does it resonate with people, yes or no? How does it factor into your process if it does? That's the secret of the artist's life, is if, if, we, if I do something you really, really like, and then every, I get the feedback, and then I just do it over and over and over, mm -hmm. you know what's going to happen. So yeah. um, you have to be brave enough to always face a blank piece of paper by yourself. And the more you can get into your own world, into your own zone, and not think about what everybody else likes, the better chance you have of making something unique and have your own voice. Mm -hmm. um, you really need to leave your influences out in the hall when you go into the studio. Uh, don't idolize anybody. Uh, be influenced by them, like them. But then when it's time to do your thing, they're not in the room with you. It's just you. And nobody wants to, I think what, the art that people resonate with most is what feels like there is an immediacy to the creator. You want to feel like you had an experience that's specific and that no other artist or writer could give you. You got that person's vision and voice at that point in time, which, yeah, social media, let, there's an immediacy there that it allows you to experience with the person who's creating it. And I think the reason for that is because um, the, the most valuable thing you have going for you is your mind. We all, almost everybody can draw, everybody can play guitar, everybody can sing, blah, blah, blah. Well. So it's what, it's what comes out of your head, it's how you sing it, it's how you drew it, it's how you wrote it. And if you start talking about um, something that we see every night on a sitcom, everybody's gonna zone out. Mm -hmm. But if you start talking about your surgery and how you didn't want to have it because you're in love with somebody because, and you don't want to waste time in the hospital because you only have one day to be with them. So now you, just, now we all care. Like, yeah. whoa, what are you going to decide? You know, I mean, you have to kind of open up. And if you open up, 85% uh, of the world has empathy. They will listen and they will care. And that's what I found with my romance stories. I was getting letters from all kinds of people, even conservative people, saying, okay, I never thought I'd be pulling for two girls to find their happiness together, but yeah, we're pulling for this because they're working, they've tried so hard, and you know, people yeah. kind of, people are better than the, than the news makes us think they are. Yes, well, we got much deeper, specifically on social media than I thought we would, but what a <laughs> pleasure. I think we have just enough time for the most important part, which is your signature. Is it already, yeah. Um, Terry, thank you so much for drawing for us and talking with us today. And you guys, you can follow along everything that we're doing on the live stage all weekend long, speaking of social media, with hashtag C2E2 and hashtag It's a Fan Thing. And stick around because up next we have cosplay superstar Yaya Han. Thank you so much. Pleasure. Thanks, guys. Great. Thank you, everybody.